the subject of, of why study Canadian business history. Uh, this is what I call it, and I think the, the program has something else, similar notion. And I'm going to organize my thoughts, my comments, on, under five headings. And I'll go through those five headings. And uh, Joe uh, has, I think, a plan that after he and you speak, we'll come back and talk about why we actually invested in the development <laughs> of, uh, of a program and a chair in Canadian business history. So let me uh, begin with my five headings. The first one has to do with why we study Canadian business history in order to help understand how Canada's business enterprise system developed. Understanding how the system developed. How it grew and changed over the last three centuries, but particularly in the last, say, 50 years. The fundamental work of Alfred Chandler of the Harvard Business School, most of you will be familiar with his name, if not his work, widely considered the dean of business historians, uh, was, and I quote, asking about the large patterns and causes of corporate success, unquote. And that, according to Scranton and Fridenson, in Reimagining Business History, a recent book uh, on the subject of, of uh, studying and teaching business history. Under this heading, we study business history to understand the development of what we call Western capitalism, its legal and institutional framework, and the role of government in terms of legislation, incentives, and regulation, particularly in natural resource development. We examine the sources of investment capital and the development of Canada's financial industry. And as you may know, Joe Martin and the late Chris Kobrak have a book that will be published this, this winter, I guess, Joe, on the development of Canada's <coughs> banking industry, financial industry. We also look at the growth of international trade and more recently the implications of what we call globalization. We consider the impact of acceleration in the pace of change, dynamism and innovation, and what's called disruption in terms of technology, products, services, and consumer behavior. These are all more recent developments affecting Canadian business history. Above all, we try to understand the touchstones of what's called competitiveness. So that's the first general heading, understanding how the system developed, what it consists of, how it worked, what went right, what went wrong, and so on. The second major heading. Hi, Jim. Second major heading. We study Canadian business history to help understand how individual firms develop, manage change, innovate, and renew, or disappear, or are absorbed by competition. We analyze the factors affecting the successes or failures of Canadian businesses at various times in history. These so-called case studies which Harvard Business School pioneered might, for example, include 17th, 18th, or 19th century firms such as Hudson Bay Company, Molson's, Bank of Montreal, Massey Harris, CPR, Bell, Nortel, or more recently, Blackberry, 
Bombardier, Canadian Natural Resources, McCain's, Thomson Reuters, or Weston's. These are just some examples of case studies that might illuminate how things went right or wrong for these firms over time. Have a look at a book by Tom Jenkins and David Johnson, His Excellency David Johnson, called Ingenious, recently published, a description of 297 Canadian innovations. Some surprises, but a noteworthy an anthology. It's an interesting collection of things that were invented, in effect, and, and innovated in Canada. A big reason to study business history again is to learn how, about how firms and their leaders were successful or otherwise over time. Third, third heading. We study business history to help us understand the benefits of what might be called, quote, historical context decision making, unquote. A critical thought and analysis process, which should be included alongside quantitative and strategic analyses when faced as a business executive or investor with significant investment or divestment opportunities. Historical context decision making. Let me give you a couple of examples of my own experience. In the early 90s, I was working for a company called BCE, and we were invited to consider an investment in Thailand. The world was beginning to deregulate in the uh, phone service business. And most countries were looking for investors with know-how to come and help their second carriers. Thailand was one. And we had formed a business called Bell Canada International, which had begun to develop interests outside of Canada. I was asked to go over to Thailand, Bangkok, to meet with the group that had the inside track on the second license. And we were told we were competing with 9X, the New York telephone company. Well, uh, I knew nothing about the history of telecommunications in Thailand. And I didn't think I could have a discussion with the guys that were looking at investing in this, and we were going to be an investor as well, without understanding how the Thai telephone system had developed, how it was being regulated, what the role of government was, who the investors were, and along specifically who the, the second carrier investor in Thailand was. He was a guy actually who had made a lot of money in the shrimp business, so he clearly needed a telecom partner. <laughs> Uh, so that, you know, that I had to spend, uh, I'd say, intensively a week or two to try and understand that history so I could not only have a discussion with the ties involved in making the decision, but also to decide whether or not this was something that Bell Canada uh, should try and think about. And there were other analyses being done in terms of how rich we were going to get if we got this second license along with a Thai partner and so on. Uh, but understanding how this was unfolding was a key element, for me at least, in how we were going to decide what to do here. Let me give you another example. Uh, for a bunch of years, I was chairman of a company called CAE in Montreal. CAE's business had grown on the basis of, of developing and producing flight simulators, among the best in the world. Big share of the market for big aircraft simulators, 60, 70 percent of the market. Uh, so we were faced in the early 90s there with a question about whether we should get into pilot training as opposed to simply 
building flight simulators. At that point in time, the flight training business was by and large run by the airlines. Each airline had its own, its own flight training business, Air Canada did, all the airlines. And we sold them flight simulators. The question that bothered us was how this might affect our business in terms of selling simulators to these folks if we became a competitor, if we actually began to offer uh, pilot training services. And so we had to position this in time in terms of whether this was a risk worth taking and with possible partners or otherwise. Uh, well, we decided in the end to take the plunge. And it was not a, an easy beginning. In fact, the company's stock went down to about half its value. Today, flight pilot training is well over 50% of the revenue of the com company and very successful, uh, profitable and uh, growing. So, you know, we, we wondered whether the timing was right. It wasn't a question of whether we could put together a business that would, would make it happen. But studying the historical context was very important. The fourth <coughs> heading, and this is for business students, the study of Canadian business history should help business students with their consideration of career opportunities. To be better able to analyze how the firms they're considering joining have dealt with challenges and opportunities to get where they are. What factors have had an impact on getting the company or the institution to its current level? And what will most influence its prospects? And what about the development of its culture and its leadership lineage. These are questions that students, business students, should think about when faced with career decisions. And the method for doing that is essentially business history. Number five, on a broader note, there's a recent book by Benjamin Waterhouse called The Land of Enterprise. And it argues that American business history is a, quote, key aspect of the national story that helps explain how the U.S. developed into the land it is today, unquote. Now, there are, of course, many chapters to be written in the history of the development of the U.S. and Canada as nations. But there's no doubt that the economic and business piece deserves a central position. Calvin Coolidge, President of the United States, once said, and I quote, the chief business of the American people is business, unquote. Waterhouse, in his book, contends that, quote, the chief business of American history is business, unquote. Now, I would agree that to understand America in the 21st century, and perhaps even more important recently under President Trump, an understanding of American business history is an important prerequisite. No less so for Canada. Whether going back to Harold Innes's staple theory of Canadian development, that is fish, fur, lumber, agricultural products, minerals, the economic impact of two world wars, the economic impact of two world wars in Canada. The Canada, uh, re more recent developments such as the Canada-U.S. Auto Pact, the Canada-U.S. Free Trade Agreement, and NAFTA. The story of Canada's history and development of, uh, as a nation is certainly linked to the story of Canadian economic and business history. Let me close on this topic of why study Canadian business history with a statement by Dean Roger Martin. In 2006, when 
the Rotman Canadian Business History Program was being launched by Joe Martin. And I quote, this is a quote from Roger Martin in 2006. An understanding of Canadian business history is critical to management education. Today's business leaders need to be able to place the business problems they face within a historical and societal context. The need to understand business trends from the past so they can use that information to anticipate future changes in the marketplace." Unquote. That was Roger Martin's statement in 2006 when this program was being launched. And I'll later respond to Joe's question about why we invested in it. But one of the reasons we did was Roger Martin's enthusiasm for the development of a business history program, Canadian business history program, and six of us put up the money to fund a chair. One of the six, by the way, was John MacArthur, former dean of the Harvard Business School. And the other five of us were Canadian business people. And I'll talk about that a little later, if I may. So may I leave it there?